Hi everyone, my name is Valeria and welcome again to Cultural Evenings at Foyer International. The summer is here and for many of us summer is the time of traveling and non-stop dancing. Therefore, I am inviting you today to travel from east to west and to learn four different dance cultures. So get ready, our first stop is South Korea. Let's talk and let's dance. Hi G, thank Hello. you for being here tonight with us. And uh, there was very beautiful melody you played. Could you tell me what's the name of this instrument? Uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Um, this instrument is called um, Kayagum, and uh, it's a traditional one of traditional instrument from South Korea. And this is actually a modern version of Kayagum, the traditional one has only 12 strings, mm -hmm. um, so it's a limited um, what kind of songs you can play. This one is a modern version with 25 yeah, strings. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And you can play not only Asian melodies, but modern as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I like. And where did you find this instrument in Germany? Germany, um, I bought this, I brought this um, from South Korea. Well, actually my parents. Um, I came here first without the instrument and then I wanted it and my parents uh, wanted to visit me and I asked them to bring it with them. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. What's the Korean traditional dance look like? The thing uh, about Korean dance, we always wear this long uh, hanbok dress so your legs are um, concealed um, from the audience uh, so we try to express more with uh, arms mm -hmm. um, and shoulders um, and uh, compared to ballet uh, we don't do like high kicks mm -hmm. um, or point our uh, feet um, and when you step you always start with uh, heels not uh, mm -hmm. with with a point, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when did you learn these traditional dances? I started pretty early. Um, uh, when I was three years old, I my parents told me we went to um, a concert, dance concert, and um, I was fascinated about um, the performance. And since then, I went to their room and uh, back that I want to learn Korean dance. Um, they didn't want uh, me to learn that early because I was still wearing diapers. Um, but in the end, they gave up and I started when I was three years old um, until I was 11 because we moved to other place. And my parents uh, didn't um, want me to pursue um, uh, dancing because they thought studying is more important. Like it's it's normal in Asian country. Yeah. yeah, I think in many countries parents would insist to choose like education and yeah. science rather than dancing. Yeah, uh, how it is popular like Korean traditional dance now in Korea? Do many children try it or it's not popular anymore? Maybe it is less popular than ballet but there are still uh, girls who go to um, Korean dance school and there you can also major Korean dance in universities mm -hmm. um, yeah do boys dance Korean traditional dances or um, there is not really such a dance I would say it's not very normal mm -hmm. and which other dances you also dance I learned a bit of ballet um, and uh, modern dance and jazz dance and 
I um, currently give a dance course um, in Hope Church Port, um, a jazz dance. Mm -hmm. What is dancing for you? Oh, um, I think for me it's a way to express your emotions. Like um, it also applies uh, when I play music. And it's a thing that I enjoy, and, and I and it, and it also makes me happy. Yeah. Now we are in our improvised India and we will talk about Bollywood dance, of course. And here we have Mega from India. Hi. Hi, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me here. Yes, so you are dancing Bollywood, right? Yeah. And since what age? Um, when I was in like fourth standard, from since then I'm dancing Bollywood, semi-classical, yeah. Is it like a popular uh, thing for Indian girls to go and practice Bollywood dances since childhood or? No, not really at, like a tradition, but yeah, because we love dancing. So like uh, as a kid, we always like, like to like learn dancing. And so we join classes for Bollywood, for semi-classical or classical. Do you really like Bollywood movies yourself? Um, I used to love Bollywood movies when I was young or when I was in India, but uh, but like recently I have made my choice a little bit like, you know, uh, filtered. But yeah, I always enjoyed watching Bollywood movies, yeah. And what's your favorite movie? Uh, it's Kal Ho Na Ho because it has like, you know, it's, it, it's on a love story and it has like, you know, this amazing uh, Bollywood song and that I, I performed on that song when I was young. So yeah, it's a romantic plus emotional plus, you know, drama movie. So yeah. Okay. And what's your favorite Bollywood actor or the best dancer in Bollywood? Um, I, uh, dancer, I would say, like if you say um, like all rounder, I would say Deepika Padukone or like Madhu Dixit. She's like a diva for Bollywood. She has done, like she's, the you know diva for Bollywood dancing and the choreographer I would say Saroj Khan she is the I mean she just expired uh, 3rd of July so she was really old and uh, she was kind of an era in Bollywood for dancing like exp her expressions her moves her everything was amazing so for all the like Learn, learners like dancer learners who are learning to dance here in like in India so she's like a inspiration for everybody yeah okay so if I understand correctly the principle of the Bollywood dance so each dance belongs to a song a certain song and when you are dancing you express and show what the song says about is that correct yeah most of the times it always like uh, it's a way for us to express our emotions or like, you know, celebrations and all, yeah. Okay, so like uh, you hear the song and then you show with your movements 
Yeah, like uh, if you say the uh, the classical dances like Bharatnatyam, Kathak, like typical classical Bharatnatyam, Katha, Kuchipudi, it's all about storytelling. They always, you know, try to tell the stories about different uh, cultures through their expressions or like hand gestures and movements. Yeah. Um, if you remember, once we were dancing an old Punjabi song. Yeah. And the lyrics was something like. Hey, beautiful girl, mm -hmm. come sit with me in the car. Yeah. And we try. Yeah. How would you show, like, because I remember, like, this movement, mm -hmm. it means, like, a man. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was like, uh, it was Punjabi song. It was like, Gabru, Beja, Meri Gadi, Chu, Tenu, like this. <laughs> it was like that, yeah. So basically, this one means For, a man. Yeah. And this one means a girl. This is a girl. And <laughs> that means a car. Uh, final question. Yeah. What is the dance for you? Dance for me, it's it's uh, kind of my safe space. It's kind of my way to express my emotions. Yeah. So welcome to sunny Africa and precisely Uganda. So here we have Sarah. Yes. Sarah is a professional dancer, we can say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. <laughs> yes. yes. So which styles do you personally dance? I am from Uganda in Africa and uh, I do African movements, Afro house movements. I do hip hop, I do dancehall, I do Latin movements and I do contemporary, yes. Cool. And how long have you been dancing? I've been, I started professionally when I was 16, but for the traditional part, from school, from as a, ch a young child, I was dancing. So yeah, because you have to learn the basics of your culture and who you are. So I was doing it when I was young. Yeah. Every country has different movements. Every country has the richness of this tradition of culture, of customs, of tribes, of language, of musicality, of drums, of sound. So um, every country has different components. And dance as a general has the same components. We have sound, we have body, we have movement, we have rhythm, we have breath. So most African movements or most traditional movements are grounded. Mm -hmm. And for example, contemporary, you're really grounded and you're flawless. You breathe and your hands are wave and your, your neck is flawless, you know? So we have that. We have different types to different events, to cer ceremonies, to funerals, to uh, marriages, mm -hmm. to, to graduation. So we have different things. But I would definitely say that it is a very, very important aspect to modern dance today. African movements are really a, a big foundation, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, are there a lot of emotions inside the African dance or it more about techniques and rhythm? Yes, definitely. We have so many emotions. We have the sound. The sound is really important. Uh, for example, when, I'm with the, when the drums sound, like for example in the morning and the mm -hmm. drums sound pa, 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 and everybody is awakened up you know it's 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 a morning it's energetic it's go work go to the fields go harvest go do farming so it's a lot of a lot of sound and a lot of emotions strong emotions and then when somebody is sick or somebody is dying or somebody has died I was past, past and you on. still dance when it's sad is it's dying. sad no we have like Different, different. Like I say, different cultures have a different way of of moving and of portraying their, themselves. So there is there is a natural dance, funeral. Should I say a natural death dance mm -hmm. where everybody's mourning, everything is sad. Mm -hmm. You know, the plants are sad. 
the water is sad, you know, the animals are sad, the environment is sad. So for Africa, it's not, it's not all the time moving, it's, it's the surrounding. That is also movement for us, yes. And we have ceremonies. When, you, when, you, when I'm getting married or somebody's getting married, that's a big celebration in, in the community, you know. Party will be aligned in the, in the, you know, on the road and people will be shouting and everybody, you don't have to have an invite. You know, you just hear the, the music and you just join in. It's a collective um, hand, fullness, you know. And the, once you hear the drums, you know, if you want to see, of course, you run and see where the party is. So definitely, yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, are there different dance for men and women? Or are there any dances specifically for women or men? Yes, we have. For example, in my country, Uganda, we have many tribes, many cultures, many tribes. And my tribe is the princess, it's the royalty, it's, it's uh, the king and the queen. So the, the women are uh, treated as royalness, you know, they're, they're pampered, they're loved. And the men are strong, you have to be strong and manly, no crying and no, you know, being soft, you have to be so hard. So we have different, different nurse movements for men and for, for ladies, you know. Mm -hmm. For example, in my culture, the ladies, are grounded the hands are like this mm -hmm. and we use the waist you know and the men use more the chest and the feet mm -hmm. and they're jumping and they're jumping and they're turning and the ladies are more elegant so yeah mm. okay mm -hmm. then <laughs> maybe we will try a couple of movements how the princesses in your yes, tribe should, dance yes. so let's try it uh, we're going to go through different uh, movements so we're going to start with the feet this is called Maganda dance, Maganda. Maganda dance. Yes, from Uganda, Baganda, Maganda, okay? <laughs> so you heel, 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 heel. Now the hands are always leveled and you, you, you tiffen, yeah? Mm -hmm. Tiff, tiff, kinny, tiff, yes. So you open your legs a little bit and then you move one and two, three and four. Now you have to hip, hip out, hip out. Now you have to coordinate everything together and you move. Ta -ta 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 yes! Because it's so elegant, nice. Now you're going to make it to the back one. And two, and three, and four, and one. Now you can look at your hands. Three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Now you have to move your hips. Ready? Five, six, seven, and ta -ta 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 <laughs> yes, good job. <laughs> so I teach you one with the hands. So like a prayer, open, hold, open, hold, open. And move your feet back. Move, back, ta, back. Now with your hands, ta, 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 ta. Now you're gonna go lower and like push your, your like yeah, you're bending and then you go five, six, seven, and ta, 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 ta. Nice. Nice. Ta. Ta. Yes. Okay. The last one. Okay. The last one. So we have the hand here. The other hand. This one is here. So you have to step out. Step out. So you have to push your hips. Tight. So you step and you you step and you tight. So tight. 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 Give it three. Then one and two and three and four and five and six. And seven and, and faster and faster <laughs> and turn. <laughs> yes, good <Thank> job. <laughs> yes, that was beautiful. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's then see your dance. Yes, welcome to my world. Let's go.
Good, and you? <laughs> Me too, thank you. So you are coming from Mexico, but you will represent a Cuban salsa in our video. Why is that? Oh, that's because I just simply like uh, Cuban salsa a lot. Actually, in Mexico, when you grow up, you listen a lot to Latin music. It can be salsa, bachata, cumbias. And um, so one of the dances or music that I identified here in, in Germany, it was Cuban salsa. I saw it was, I could learn it here, and it was also very popular all over Germany and Europe. And how long have you been dancing Cuban salsa? I've been dancing for like four years, maybe very intensively, yeah. <laughs> and you're teaching now? Yes, actually, some friends and I, we were very much into Cuban salsa, learning different cities from different Cuban dancers. And we learned a lot, so we liked the idea of, okay, why not teaching here in Göttingen? And that's what we're doing now for more than a year already. We have a group called Salseros Göttingen and we've been teaching Cuban salsa. Okay, and can you tell me the difference between Cuban salsa and other types of salsa? Yes, for example, you have the Mambo or the LA salsa. These were born more in the US and they dance it more in a line. Mm -hmm. But Cuban salsa is more in a circle. It's a little bit more relaxed, I would say. And also Cuban salsa can have influences from other dances. And um, yeah, and you have also Puerto Rican salsa, Colombian salsa, salsa caleña, which is also very popular. So if you dance one salsa, you can probably dance the other ones with mm -hmm. other people, but they have their own style too. Mm -hmm. And um, you would, would say that uh, salsa is like a social dance, right? Yes, yeah, salsa is a social dance. I, I, for what I know, you're also looking at other dances here for this video. Uh, but this one is a, a dance that you can learn and you can go to a salsa party and dance with anyone. It's like playing basketball or football. If you know how to do it, you can go to the court. You don't have to know the people. You mm -hmm. make some teams, you play. You're going to be people that have higher level or lower level, but everybody can have fun. Mm -hmm. That's a social dance. I just, do you want to dance? And you say, yeah, okay. And we dance. Um, I read a quote that Cuban salsa has three main ingredients. Female, male, and the feeling of music. Do you agree with that? This is a great point you mentioned, <laughs> because I always tell to the people learning with us that you have to dance with your partner to the music. This is a communication, it's, it's connection with your partner and to the music. So it's very important to listen to, because some songs can be a bit more crazy, you enjoy more, and some can other be a bit more romantic. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand what you're listening to, but also that you're dancing with someone. You're not dancing alone. Mm -hmm. So this quote is great. <laughs> so if we say social dance, male, female, like feeling of music. What do you do if you don't like a person you are dancing with? Well, I mean, sometimes it can happen that there's no connection or for some reason you don't like dancing with this person. I think the nice thing is to finish the song and say thank you and then leave. If it's really hard to finish the song, you say, hey, uh, sorry, I'm not feeling good, but I think it's, it's a bit polite to finish a, a song and try to enjoy it and then say, okay, thank you. And then you can dance with someone else. So rule number one, if you don't like a person you are dancing with, better still to finish the song and then you can choose another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now we are trying to learn a little bit of Cuban salsa, just basic steps. And maybe if I can learn it, then you also can learn it. So let's try. For sure. <laughs> what would be the basic steps? So the basic step, you start because you are the follower okay. with the one, the, the first count to the back. Mm -hmm. And then we can go one, two, three, and then you come five, six, seven. We can go one, two. yeah, your arms is natural, like you're walking. Okay. One, and where two, do I look? Three. <laughs> and, and you. It depends on you. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can also try the side step. Okay. And then you start to the side. You do pa, 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 pa. That's good, yeah. One, two, three to the back, and yeah, Three, five, one, six, seven. And we can try a step called mariposa, which means butterfly. Uh -huh. Two, three, five, and you go back. Uh -huh. dun, dun. Yeah, good. Five, six, seven. One, <laughs> two, three. Basic step. Good. Yeah, five. It's so easy to learn salsa <laughs> with us teaching. Salsa is good me. So where do partners look when they are dancing? Like um, in the eyes or? You can look in the eyes, but not the whole time. Uh -huh. So 
I wouldn't be looking at you in the eyes. I will be more focused trying to dance. Okay, maybe <laughs> I look at you a little bit, but not the whole time. I think okay. that's, that's a bit creepy. And also sometimes people have to be very focused, so they just look anywhere. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to have some contact, yeah. That you know this person is here and you're also here. Mm -hmm. And you're together dancing, right? So, did you like the class? Yeah, of course. I learned like a lot of things in this um, 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, that was fast. That was fast. <laughs> so, if you want to keep learning or someone else wants to learn, you can find uh, our Facebook page, it's Salceros Gottingen, and there we offer uh, different Cuban salsa classes. Yeah, all the links you can find below the video, as usually, all the profile, uh, Instagram pages, Facebook pages, everything is there. Just check it out. <laughs> I'm a little bit sad to say that it was the last video for this semester, but uh, hopefully we will see each other next semester. And if you have any suggestions, please just write your comments below the video or find us in Instagram or Facebook pages. It was a pleasure to be with you all these uh, three videos and have a great summer break. Mm -hmm.